Morning everyone. Today we are starting things off on the highway and we are going to go see the man, the myth and the legend, Kazuyoshi Okomoto-san. And if you do not know who that is, aka Okachan from Yashio Factory. So we're going to go hang out with him today, get some stuff sorted out for the next drift event and uh, maybe talk about the S15, who knows. Anyways, let's uh, let's get there. We're on the highway, we've got an hour's drive, heading all the way into Saitama. It's always worth it, trust me. Let's go. Well, we made it guys, Yashio Factory. Damn, I love Okachan's daily S15, so cool. Let's head in. I got myself a curry uh, ramen. We'll go see what the guys are up to. All right, so let's go see what Okachan's up to. I'm pretty sure he's in here making another famous set of his knuckles. There you go. What's up, Genki? Oh. <laughs> What's really interesting I find actually is a lot of customers come to him and get their knuckles redone. So like from other companies here in Japan that make knuckles for S chassis, Okachan always is uh, cutting them up and re-welding them according to his jig and style. And then that way people are able to make much better lines, especially with Nikko circuit and things like that. But uh, yeah, overall, he's a busy dude. <laughs> Super lucky that Okachan's a boss and has all the tires that I need in stock. Uh, so what we're gonna do is rip all these out, change them all, put you guys on the time lapse and go from there. We are done boys, we got these two all done with some fresh rubber, we got these two all done with some fresh rubber, and I must say that damn that was a workout for me. I previously used to suck at doing tire changes and it used to take me like, I kid you not, when I first did four tires, it took me two hours, especially with the 9J and the 265s trying to fit on. If you don't know 9J, like nine inch wide wheels, the max tire size you're supposed to go is 265. So with this tire machine, which is just like a standard tire machine, it doesn't have like any bells and whistles, it can be a bit of a workout if you've never done it before. So it took me a long time to figure out how to get a technique down. Once Okachan kind of showed me and stuff, now I'm getting four tires done in 30 minutes, which is still a bit long. I know it's a bit long, but I'm definitely speeding up and I'm liking my progress. There's a truck here right now and I just saw all of that coffee and I was like, I just want to take it all. <laughs> okay, we're all loaded up now. Fresh rubber in the back. God, I love Skylines and how you can just fit four 18 by nine. 265 tires and wheels in the back seat super awesome anyways and then if you really wanted to you could fit another two on the passenger seat but we're not aiming for that what do you guys reckon of okachan's wang game i think he's uh he's doing pretty good when i get my s15 we're definitely going to be putting this wing on there i think it's super baller um, also with this car, Okachan's planning to change it to a rear radiator setup. So in the next month or so, you guys are going to see some cool videos of that happening, which is going to be pretty awesome. I was just helping him before look up some electric water pumps and work out the sizing and things like that that he's going to go. But I think it's kind of interesting because I don't think I've seen many people still keeping the standard like SR and everything in the engine bay then going to a rear radiator setup. I think it's going to be really efficient and he's going to be able to hot lap the crap out of this thing. All right, I'm heading off now. Look at John looking boss in his car. Man, such a cool thing. Um, I had a really good time just hanging out with Okachan, and I do have some news on the S15 to share with you guys. So uh, once we get on the road and on the highway, let's talk about it. Okay, so it's time for an S15 update. Officially, this Sunday, I am going to Yashio Factory, and me and Okachan are gonna pull off the vinyl wrap that is currently on the car that I that, that is my S15. And then once the wrap is off and all the old sponsors and everything are gone, I will then be able to show you and reveal my new S15. Um, words cannot describe how I feel right now. I definitely have like butterflies in my stomach and I'm like super excited because this is it, the first, the first time that I get to actually do some work on this car. And it's the start of something amazing that's about to happen so yeah sunday i'm going to be filming a video um once we've got all the vinyl wrap and stuff on i'm going to do a reveal video tell you guys everything that's happening what's going to happen and i think i think the biggest thing well first of all i'm really excited because it's an s15 it's a whole new chassis and it's something that i've wanted for like quite a while now the second thing is I'm excited because of the whole new level and style of content that this is going to bring to the channel. 
and it's something that I feel is really important for everyone out there with an S chassis trying to, you know, go with the SR platform. Uh, because I feel like so many people out there, they build their SRs and they just become so unreliable that they just give up, throw an RB or a 2J in and stuff like that. And uh, this is me trying to prove that the SR is a good platform, uh, as well as just S chassis in general. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I don't know if, if I'm gonna keep an SR in the chassis for long term, because it depends where I end up going comp-wise. You know, maybe we do need to go down the route of a 2J or a VR38 in the future, who knows? But for now, I'm definitely giving SRs a good raw hot go, that's for sure. Anyways, I've kind of been rambling on for a little bit now, but S15 content starts, I start filming it on Sunday, guys. Like, it's actually happening. Oh man, I'm so excited. Um, tell me in chat, sorry, not chat, but leave a comment and tell me if you're as excited as I am because it's finally happening. Ah, the only thing that would make this better is on Sunday, like we start filming S15 content and then the owner of that RX-7 calls up and goes, yeah, sure, you can have the car. Like, how awesome would that be? Anyways, I'm starving and May's gone to the gym tonight and has to work back late. So, I'm gonna do a filthy Mickey D's run. Here we go. Mickey D's, oh gosh. Oh, I feel so dirty coming here, but it's cheap and it's fast and it's quick. I think I said that already. Fast and quick, same thing, right? Anyways, this is this is Japanese McDonald's, guys. Enjoy. Check check out the menu. They get like teriyaki burgers and stuff. It's pretty funny, actually. Okay, so I'm back home and something's arrived in the mail, um, and it's something that I've been waiting for for a very long time. You guys, a lot of you guys know that I got caught with a speed camera on the, one of the highways here in Japan in a 50 kilometer zone. Um, and it was a really sucky situation, just briefly getting into it. I was overtaking someone that was just swerving all over the place and being stupid. Um, I don't know if they were sleeping, falling asleep at the wheel or drink driving or something like that, but they were definitely acting really weird like that. So I just dropped the car down to second and flew past them. And then while I was doing a pull to pass the person, you know, I kind of did, you know, ride it out to the top of limiter. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I had no idea, but there was a speed camera there and it got me doing 107 kilometers an hour in a 50 kilometer zone. This is on a highway, by the way, and like a transition thing where you're going between tolls. So it, it's kind of normal in Japan that there are these 50 kilometer zones on the highway. I know that seems really crazy and really slow for a highway, and trust me, it is, and it drives me insane that that even exists here. But it's a fact, and I wasn't being careful enough, and I was being a bit stupid and frustrated, and in that moment, I just overtook him without even looking for speed camera signs, and here we are. So anyways, the letter came. Um, and mind you, they have been very kind to me. First time offense, um, and everyone I have spoken to has said that this is kind of unheard of for how cheap they find me. Uh, and what's even weirder is no letter has come about my license and saying if it's going to be suspended or anything or points deducted. Um, because what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to get the letter first about your license, then after that comes the fine. Nothing came for my license, only the fine. Uh, so at this point it looks like I'm not losing my license and I'm just going to get this fine. Um, but I'm just trying to find a way to hold this up without revealing any of my personal information. Uh, that's fine, it just kind of shows my name, it doesn't really have uh, any other information on there, but essentially they're finding me 80,000 yen. You can see here, if the camera's going to pick up on it, there you go, 8,000 yen, 80,000 yen, which is about $800 US. Pretty hefty fine, uh, but it's supposed to be like Juman, San Juman, which is like two to three grand. Um, because other people that may spoken to that got caught doing 57 kilometers over the speed limit like I had, I did, all got fined like two grand, three grand, um, and if they were really lucky, they only got fined one grand. So we think that the reason why they were so nice to me is because of what happened earlier on this, uh, earlier, sorry, later on last year, because I got the fine, I got caught speeding on the 31st of December. <laughs> Believe it or not, the last day of the year, last year. And literally like just before that, um, I got involved in a pretty big situation on the train where this like kind of bogan, we call them Yankees here in Japanese, like the the term for Japanese word for bogan or redneck is Yankee. Uh, it's spelt different than like American Yankee. It's a different word. I know it sounds similar, but it's not an American. It's just a bogan kind of redneck guy. Got on the train, started beating the crap out of a student who 
never even looked at him or knew him. He just randomly wanted to start beating up this little boy. Um, I was on the train, no one else was jumping in and helping him, so I got in between this guy and the boy and defended him. Um, I didn't swing punches or anything, I just blocked him and pushed him and held him back. And then uh, at the next station, we got the police and the conductors to pull him off the train. Anyways, long story short, I spent six hours at the police station uh, giving my report. They took photos of me. Um, and then essentially the, the chief of the station, uh, like the head cop guy there, came and pulled me into his office, said thank you, and said that he was really embarrassed that no Japanese people stood up for him and things like that. So anyways... I got like a, a accommodation or something, a commendation, I don't know the correct word for that, from the police department for defending that boy and looking after him. And the, the Bogan guy, he ended up actually getting charged and going to prison, which was actually awesome. Um, but yeah, and, and long story short, I think what happened was first time speeding offense, at least this is what everyone's telling me here in Japan, like I was tell, telling Okachan about it and he said, Look, the way that the Japanese police system is, is they look at your file. If you have no history and if you've done something really good recently for them that's on file, they're normally a lot more lenient with you, as well as the amount of the fine. Uh, socialism is a big thing here in Japan when it comes to dealing with fines. They're not going to fine a uh, CEO that makes millions of dollars only like $1,000 for doing 50Ks over. If they, they find out how much you earn monthly and then what they do is and they find out how many houses you own, how much money you have saved in the bank account, they find you according to your net worth here. So the fact is, is in Japan, I don't really have a net worth because all my money is in Australia and as well as technically, I don't have a job. YouTube is not considered as a job here. So they think that I'm unemployed. So that's another thing is the fine was probably really low and only $800. I mean, it's still not, it, it's not low. It's still a, a pretty hefty amount of money. Um, but yeah, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, and we think that that's the reason why, you know, what happened later on uh, in 2018 with me saving that boy on record, plus um, not having a job, not having a net worth here in Japan. They think, uh, everyone thinks that that's why. And they also think it's really strange that I never got a letter about my license first. They all think that that's never going to come now because that's supposed to come before the fine. So, yeah. Um, looks like we just got a fine. I'll update you guys if uh, anything else changes. I know this is like a long part of the video of me talking, but I know a lot of you guys have been wanting an update to that video when I explained I got caught speeding and had to do all of that. At the end of it, I spent six hours at the police station, four hours at the prosecution office, and I have been waiting since the 31st of December 2018 to know how much I'm being fined and what's going to happen. Like, they even said I could go to jail for this, um, which obviously didn't happen and, and probably wouldn't have happened, but they said that, like, if for any reason the judge wanted to, he could send me to jail for the speeding fine. And they said that that can happen with any speeding fine, even if you're only doing 10 Ks over. If the judge wants to, he can send you to jail for it. So yeah, anyways, that's that and my experience. Don't ever get caught speeding here in Japan, guys. The paperwork and the pain, huge pain in the ass it is outweighs everything. So yeah, um, lesson learned. You're gonna be a lot more careful next time. Uh, partly as well, I was, I was a little bit, uh, um, yeah, I, I wasn't reading any of the signs and I wasn't paying too much attention. I didn't even know that zone was 50 Ks an hour. Ah, it sucks. Anyways, enough ranting. Thanks heaps for watching, guys. I'm sorry that this video ended with a long segment of me talking, but it is what it is, updating you all. I'm repeating myself now. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Jamate.